We had Drew McIntyre going up to JBL and Baron Corbin, who were playing poker. And JBL starts insulting McIntyre. So McIntyre challenges Corbin to a match. And Corbin stands up and he says, why don't we settle this right now? And he's right in his face. And Drew McIntyre says, well, I respect my elders. And he nods at JBL. And then he says, I don't respect you. And he sucker punches him. And then and then bails out of there. And he goes, I'll see you in the ring if you're man enough. And Baron Corbin goes, what a cheap shot, which it was. So mm. this this led to a match. It was Drew McIntyre and Baron Corbin, 18 minutes. And like I said, it wasn't a bad match, but, I mean, this was really where the crowd, I mean, I don't know if they were tired or they just don't want to see Baron Corbin going for 18 minutes, but they were quiet for a lot of this. Finally, Drew makes his comeback at the end, and they got into that. Uh, there was interference from, uh, well, first... Uh, JBL goes to interfere, and Akira Tozawa jumps the barricade. He's got bleached blonde hair now, and he goes up to JBL, and he steals his cowboy hat, and he puts it on, and then he runs off as JBL goes after him. This distracts uh, Corbin. McIntyre hits the Claymore and pins him. So, pretty lame finish after 18 minutes of wrestling, and... uh, I don't know where it goes, but because I was back stealing cowboy hats. We had a OC Judgment Day segment that led to a huge brawl amongst both teams. And uh, somewhere here on this show, they announced that uh, uh, Meechin is the new name of Mia Yim. So they've uh, they've changed her name. Well, you know, I mean, they. I was surprised they brought her in as Mia Yim just because... You know, the doctrine, and granted, that's changed a little bit of, of you know, if you've used that name on the indies, and she used medium, you know, on the indies for years, that you um, you need to have a new name. But they're not as gung-ho as they were, you know, a couple months ago, where that was like a official whatever. No, and it's but, also, you know, something that Triple H always did differently from Vince, is when he would bring in a Kenta, for example, you know, Kenta would debut... And the name Kenta would appear on the Titantron as he began his entrance, and then it would change to his new name. So they would acknowledge right. who he was, but then give him the new name. As opposed to Vince, who would just give you a new name, and out of nowhere, you'd be somebody different. So I think this was yeah. generally the same thing, where she came back as Mia Yim, but now she explained why she calls herself Meechin, and now they've just changed the name to that. So it's not like they brought yeah. her back with a new name, like when Katana Chance just got a totally new name out of nowhere with no explanation. I, I prefer it this way. They're not insulting well, your oh, intelligence. It's, it's, always, it's always better when it's, um, you know, when it's explained. And, you know, you bring, yeah, you bring her in as who she is and as who people know. And then when you start calling her something new, then that slowly, you know, it, it's it's a lot less insulting to the fans to to explain it this way rather than like you said with Casey Catanzaro where one day she got a new name and there's no explanation no she just got a new name yeah so then the main event was uh, Rhea Ripley and Oscar this is one of those uh, three hour things where there were two matches in the third hour and uh, they filled up an hour with it and one match was 16 minutes one match was like 17 minutes so like before this match started. I mean, they did all of the entrances. Then they do the long talking segment. Then they've got the commercials. And finally, they start this match. And I was caught off guard because of the way that WWE books of late. It's Rhea versus Asuka. And members of both teams are at ringside. And so you're just waiting for a brawl to break out. The heels to do interference leading to Rhea winning. And what happened was both teams are out there, and then they just did a clean finish. Rhea just grabbed her, hit her with her finish, and pinned her. And then they got the uh, into the giant brawl afterwards, and uh, they've announced that the final member of the babyface team is going to be announced on SmackDown. And it's very interesting because uh, I think it's going to be... Um, uh, Candace. I think it's Candace. Yeah. That's that's like uh who it's believed to be. But Rhea yeah. or, um Bianca did cut a promo and she made some comment like, 
You know, if you think you're going to tune in Friday and be disappointed, think again. And I'm not saying that people would be disappointed by Candace, but I do believe that there are people that are going to build this up in their head to be like, you know, a Sasha Banks or or whoever. And so it was interesting the way that she she worded that. And then Corey uh, made a comment on commentary, and they've, they've done this for a while now. He, he goes, you know, I, I couldn't help but know, or Becky, for example, they may think it's going to be Becky, but um, he goes, I couldn't help but notice that, uh, you know, Alexa Bliss doesn't look like she's into this at all. So uh, they're teasing that Alexa could turn on the babyface team here. And I don't know what they're going to do, but uh, those are certainly some of the stories are, they're playing up for, for Saturday. So here's the card. We've got Women's War Games, Bianca, Alexa, Asuka, Michin, and whoever the fifth person is against Bailey, Dakota, EO, Nikki Cross, and Rhea Ripley. We've got Seamus, Ridge Holland, Butch, Drew, and Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns, Sola Sokoa, Sami Zayn, and the Usos. Both of these War Games matches, which, by the way, is uh, submit, surrender, or pinfall. So you can do pinfalls in these War Games. we got Ronda Rousey, Shotzi, for the SmackDown women's title, which, by the way, if you watch SmackDown, they gave Shotzi absolutely zilch in that match with Shayna Baszler. It was what they've they've done before where she got like a fluke win, off distraction. You don't believe for a second she could beat Ronda Rousey. That's how they built it up. AJ versus Finn Balor with both teams at ringside. And Seth Rollins, Bobby Lashley, Austin Theory, triple threat match for the U.S. title. So... That is War Games coming up on Saturday this year. So there you go. <laughs> the I WWE legendary joke, joke book. book. Why do WWE superstars fingers hurt? <laughs> 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 Why Grin. were Gene Erkerlund's pants always so angry? Erkerlund? <laughs> Where does Beth Phoenix shop online? Amazon? The Glamazon! Oh, yeah. Yep. No. No. I mean, no. <laughs> no, that is the answer. Glamazon. That's what I said! <laughs> you said Gramazon. No, I said Glamazon! <laughs> oh, there should be a Gramazon. <laughs> yeah, Gramazon, actually. You get, like, like, puppy you get it to you real slow. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.